So the Tesla Model 3 like we have right behind here is literally one of the most popular modern day EVs. As a matter of fact, last year it drastically outsold every other car manufacturer producing electric vehicles in Europe across the board. But with all of that said, did you realize there is numerous reasons why you should definitely not even consider buying a Tesla Model 3. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. So the Tesla Model 3 was a way for Tesla to bring the technology and modern EVs to a wider spectrum. As a matter of fact, many more people can afford to buy a modern day Tesla Model 3 or the Model Y just because of the starting price. And you can get into one of these for a mere $60,000 Canadian. And while that's not chump change, it's a far cry from the $150,000 or $180,000 Model S's that often people were accustomed to seeing on the roads. But now, unfortunately, because so many more of these vehicles are hitting the mainstream, what we're finding is a whole plethora of issues. Now, a lot of the issues are quality control related. And as a matter of fact, you realize for 2021 that Tesla Model 3 has as many as 11 current outstanding recalls for their vehicles. And a point of contrast is the simple fact that Lexus IS350 of the same year actually has a goose egg, zero outstanding recalls. So that sort of paints a little bit of the story. But let's get into the first one that'll actually show you how serious things can be. Here we have a camera, here we have a camera, and there we also have a camera under there. So the AEB or the Automatic Emergency Braking System solely relies on the accuracy of the cameras that these vehicles use for sensing. So it uses for cross traffic sensing and all kinds of other technologies. The problem is the toggle between the fisheye as well as narrow view often is mistaken through the computer and the logic and potential results in the failure to observe other adjacent traffic that could result in leaving you vulnerable for collision. Another recall is the measurement of speed. Often it's not identified whether it's kilometers or miles per hour, thus resulting in a drastic difference in speed. And for those that can't tell by the seat of their pants how fast they're going, could result in driving way too fast and put yourself at harm's way. Another one is the pedestrian warning, which doesn't always activate as you would expect. Unfortunately, if there's somebody standing in the way of the vehicle, and it doesn't detect that person there. Sadly, we're in a world today where we rely on the technology to keep us safe. Regardless, it's not operating as expected in some cases, thus resulting in a potential catastrophic issue. And another one is the failure to properly defrost the windows. Now, while that works great in California, Texas, and Florida, it doesn't always work very well here in the northern states or Canada where you have up to six, seven, or eight months of the year where it's below zero degrees Celsius or 32 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And unfortunately, the auto roll stop sometimes malfunctions and it results in the vehicle actually not completely stopping, but actually continually rolling through an intersection, thus resulting in the possibility of getting smashed or T-boned by another vehicle. And there's another recall related to the AEB or the Automatic Emergency Braking System, where even if there's nothing in front of the vehicle, it's been noted where it automatically faults out and detects the actual urgency to stop, even when it's need not needed. And unfortunately, vehicles that might be trailing behind wind up crashing into it because the vehicle abruptly comes to a stop when not entirely required. There's also unfortunately a problem with this front suspension lateral link which keeps everything tied down tightly and that has been known to come loose. Quality control issues results in potential damage to the vehicle or the passengers inside. So it's not just about recalls. Clearly there's numerous recalls that just scratches the surface, but there's actually some other issues and we're talking about quality control related issues in some cases. Let's show you right now. One issue is the quality of the paint. Hasn't always been very consistent. Sometimes you find orange peels, sometimes it's too thin, and sometimes it just allows certain body panels to start exposing themselves to the elements, thus resulting in early forms of rust. So paint, rust, and early deterioration are some signs that they're starting to see with some of these Tesla Model 3s. So panel alignment's been a consistent issue throughout the brand. For example, we have two matching Tesla Model 3s right behind me here, and you'll notice the hood looks a little different on both units. If you look at these two vehicles, you'll notice a tighter gap here, and it sort of lifts up. It almost looks like it's lifting at the corners. Then, when we look at this vehicle, I've noticed the gap is consistent all the way around, which tells me that the quality control is not consistent from one vehicle to the next. And there's a bunch of consistent quality control related issues. For example, a lot of vehicles are finding humidity and condensation within the headlights. And of course, LEDs don't provide enough heat to melt it off and you wind up with water inside the headlights. That's one issue. The under tray underneath often is known to come off or starts flapping in the wind. There have been lots of cases where that's become, become delaminated or come apart, as well as nuts and bolts 
through hardware, whether you're talking on the wheels, wheel lug nuts coming loose or not being entirely fastened, or whether it's suspension bolts and nuts not entirely torqued properly underneath, that's a consistent problem. Another issue is some of the seals aren't entirely fastened properly. What we're having is water ingress. Whether water's coming in through this area or the water's coming in through the trunk, this is another problem that's consistently going on. And the problem if you allow the water to get inside a vehicle for too long, eventually you get mold, you can get rot, and overall deterioration amongst just the bad smell. And another big problem, as you can see, this rear glass panel is quite large. It runs from there all the way up to the sunroof section. It's large, it's expensive, and it is what it is, but that's been known to crack, and very easily, I might add, and it's due to the flex of the vehicle. There's been many vehicles show up for customers right off the truck, right off the proverbial boat, with that glass panel cracked. Sad state of affairs, but quality control and glass is always a rough combination anyway if you're trying to prevent it from breaking. More alignment issues often with some of these door panels. Sometimes they're at different heights. Sometimes you'll have these door handles pushed in too far or otherwise. There's some issues in some of the alignment with those fittings. And another problem is this rear bumper assembly. There's been many reported cases where you catch a little snowbank and it rips that entire assembly off. Now that's a sad state of affairs and while that can happen to a lot of vehicles, it seems to be especially sensitive on some of these Teslas. There's been also numerous problems related to batteries consuming themselves way too quickly, but even more importantly, a problem where there's an emergency shutdown or the vehicle actually decides to start powering down. It actually tells the driver to pull over safely and turn the vehicle off. Some customers are finding they do a reboot and it works. Other times it's related to a problem with the high voltage controller. And again, further confirmation that quality control is still in the works. So that's not to deter you necessarily from buying the Model 3, it's just to say that clearly the quality control isn't entirely where it needs to be. Now while there's many, many very happy owners, sadly there's still some strong quality control problems that need to be dealt with and sorted out. Ultimately, it's not the most unreliable car on the road, but it's certainly by no means the most reliable. Clearly, there's struggles when you're dealing with colder climates, where you get more humidity, where you get colder weather and frost. That's the situation where you're gonna find yourselves with more problems with these Teslas. If you're driving in states like Florida or Texas or California, you're typically gonna find less problems because the cold weather seems to be wreaking havoc on batteries and wreaking havoc on all electrical systems that often don't see those kind of issues in hotter weather. But ultimately the choice is yours. Whether you wanna buy a Tesla Model 3 like we have parked back here, or whether you wanna explore the whole plethora of new EVs hitting the market. The Ford Mustang Mach-E is a great selection, Porsche Taycan. There's of course the Chevy Bolt, which has had problems with charging issues and potential fires. And I guess you just have to ask yourself, do you wanna be the pioneer to see this thing through perfection? I'm not looking to be a lab rat, I don't know about you, but personally, I think there's great potential. However, there's just too many problems outstanding at this time. And with all of that said, if you've been shopping for a new or used luxury car guaranteed, you're gonna to wanna to check that video because that's a list of vehicles that won't even make it 60,000 miles. I hope to see you real soon. Catch you next time, bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>